Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Kentucky Proud. In this episode, we are going to be interviewing Tim Thornberry from Kentucky Farm Bureau. I am super excited to talk to him and let you all get to know a little bit about him and his story. Uh, so welcome to Ag Aspirations and please welcome Tim. <laughs> Alex, so good to see you. Thanks for having me today. Thanks for joining us. Well, Absolutely. Tim, Will you please go ahead and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Alex, I am the editor of the Kentucky Farm Bureau News Magazine. It is a monthly, and when I say monthly, we publish 10 times a year. And it's a magazine devoted to our organization and to the agriculture industry itself. And we have members all across the state who get that magazine every month. Uh, and then in uh, two months, uh, uh, in June and July, we do a combined issue that we send out to uh, all of our members, our associate members. A lot of people recognize Kentucky Farm Bureau as an insurance company, uh, which we certainly are. Uh, and we're also an ag advocacy organization. So uh, everybody in the June, July, and December, and February, uh, they get a copy of our magazine as well. That is fantastic. So I'm glad you covered a little bit about what Farm Bureau is because some of our viewers might not be sure, especially our young students. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you got to your position um, at Farm Bureau, what that career path was kind of like for you? Well, it, it's a, it's, it was a very diverse career path. To be honest, uh, uh, I got my start uh, in newspapers as a sports writer. No uh, way. <laughs> Many, many years ago, uh, I was a photographer first. That was really my, my core training. Uh, my dad was a photographer, and he sort of gave me the bug, and I used to, to go with him and uh, work with him quite a bit. Uh, and so uh, that was really my thing. And um, I, was, I had a writing class uh, at the University of Kentucky, and um, I really wasn't interested in writing. It was... Uh, it was a requirement back in those days. I would be much more marketable as a photographer if I wrote as well. And she seemed to see something in my writing at the time that maybe I did not. Uh, and so, um, you know, one thing after another happened and I, I took a little uh, part-time job being a sports writer for a small uh, weekly paper, uh, transcend into a uh, uh, a, a daily paper uh, after that and just sort of moved up and moved up and about, oh, it's probably been closer to 30 years ago, uh, I began to work for a farm paper. Um, and to be quite honest with you, I answered an ad uh, that was in a local paper that I worked for uh, just uh, to see what it was like. Uh, and that began my career in agriculture reporting uh, and uh, and eventually that would lead me to to Farm Bureau. Farm Bureau, before I came to the organization, was a very important source for me uh, in talking about agriculture and talking to different people about issues around agriculture. And so uh, when the opportunity came up, I took advantage of it and certainly I'm so glad that I did. And now we produce uh, uh, probably one of the largest agriculture magazines in this part of the country. I'm a little biased because I did get to grace the cover of that magazine uh, because of the ham breakfast. So I think it's one of the best mm. that there is. <laughs> well, thank you. And, and we got, had so many compliments on the cover. So, hey, now you're just brown nosing. <laughs> I have a signed copy in my office. <laughs> Listen, prize possession. For those of you who don't know, uh, Kentucky Farm Bureau had, hosts the annual ham breakfast at the state fair, and Miss Kentucky gets to carry uh, the winning ham that gets auctioned off. And my debut on the cover of the magazine was me holding the ham. So it was a pretty special moment in my years, Miss Kentucky, and I'm glad I have that to commemorate it. Well, you're in the world of PR, and PR is constantly changing and evolving. I feel like every single day there's some new technology or social media to keep up with. How do you stay on top of it all? Alex, uh, I have to read a lot, uh, to be honest, and uh, I watch uh, a lot of uh, 
programs related to agriculture news, uh, read a lot, talk to a lot of people. Uh, being in the Farm Bureau system, uh, we are connected uh, quite heavily with our American Farm Bureau Federation. And those folks are so very helpful uh, and they are looking at things uh, uh, from a national perspective as, uh, as we do as well, but also of course, uh, in our organization, uh, we serve as the voice of Kentucky agriculture. And so um, you're trying to stay up on the issues is very important. Uh, we have priority issues that, that we have in our organization that relate to, to uh, uh, agriculture and rural communities in some form or fashion. So we sort of have a little bit of a blueprint to go by uh, when we create uh, our magazine each month. Um, and certain things and events that happen throughout the year, of course, we're, we're stalled out on some of those right now as we, uh, as we remain safe at home. Uh, but uh, that's just uh, all part of what we do, who we are, and, and our issues that we, that we want to advocate for for our members out there. Well, I'm curious. I've certainly had a couple of moments as Miss Kentucky where I've been like, really? I get to do this as part of my job? Uh, what is one of those things for you that has just kind of been a surreal moment or something that was really cool and exciting for you? I've gotten to meet so many really, really good people. Uh, and I think, you know, that's the thing that always uh, uh, I hold dearest uh, are the relationships. Uh, you know, it's, it's uh, I know it's probably a, a funny answer to the question about that I go to this certain place or that I do this certain thing. But really for me, the most exciting thing is to spend time with our farm families where they are and what they're doing. It's, it's so uh, important, the, the work that they're doing. And for me to be a part of that and to share their story with other people, it's, uh, it's very humbling. I, I, you know, I, I just can't believe I get to do what I do. And so uh, I think on a, on a day-to-day -day basis, that's what's most exciting to me. I've certainly, uh, you know, been able to uh, to meet a lot of really nice folks uh, in in different positions related to agriculture. Got to spend some time with our USDA Secretary Sonny Perdue not too long ago. Just a wonderful person, very dedicated to farm families and agriculture. That was a highlight for me as well, as far as a person goes. Uh, I think and, so. That's course, pretty unique. <laughs> And then, uh, of course, a fellow that you know, our Ag Co uh, Commissioner, Ryan Quarles, uh, we get to work with him uh, almost on a daily basis. Just a, a great person uh, and a wonderful Ag Commissioner. Uh, and uh, so just lots of good things all the way around, I think. Well, I totally agree with you. I think the people in the farming community are some of the best around, and I personally have enjoyed getting to hear some of their stories this year. Now you have a very unique position because um, you're working for Farm Bureau, which is its own little entity and it's part of the American Farm Bureau Federation. Um, is there anything that you have loved um, being a part of working for Farm Bureau instead of working for maybe the State Department or the government, anything that's really stood out to you? Uh, you know, agriculture is uh, so important. I grew up out in the country, uh, uh, sort of on a farm. Uh, and uh, uh, so that was a really uh, connected me to, to this job, having come from that uh, uh, rural background and, and upbringing. I, I knew uh, a lot of the issues. I spent a lot of time in a tobacco field as a, as a younger person. Uh, and uh, uh, so... Uh, you know, I think that um, uh, that really helped me. Uh, there's, uh, there's just so many different things on a day-to-day -day basis uh, that we look at and we talk about and, and that, that happens. Um, it, it's hard for me to, to really pinpoint uh, any, any one particular thing. Uh, I'm very, uh, uh, very excited about our young folks that are coming up uh, in, uh, in the uh, ag classes to FFA and 4-H and, and the different career and technical organizations out there. Uh, they are a very, very good group of, of young people uh, and uh, they are very focused on the future. I feel very 
uh, uh, optimistic about the future of agriculture and, uh, and uh, rural Kentucky because we've got some great young people out there that, such as yourself, that are speaking up for farm families. And uh, that's exciting to me. That is a very exciting part of the job to know we're going to be in great hands uh, down the road. Well, speaking of our young people, uh, what advice would you give to someone who was looking to pursue a career similar to yours? And maybe what skills would they need to be successful? I think today the most important thing is to talk about uh, a, a wide variety of skills. Uh, as I uh, was coming up uh, through uh, the business, I guess, as you would say, I met a lot of wonderful photographers, for instance. I mean, they were, they were nationally known, award-winning photographers. I just, uh, I would try to emulate what they were doing. Uh, most of them were terrible writers. <laughs> you know? uh, that's not what they did. Uh, and that was okay. You know, that was a time when, uh, uh, you know, here's your specific, uh, you know, job and this is what you do. And, and the same with writers, just great whether, whether writing sports or news or, or uh, whatever the subject might be, they were just very, very good. Those are the days before digital cameras and, and social media and things like that. That didn't exist. So we, we, we didn't have to really, I guess we didn't have to have as, as large a skill set as, as maybe now. The thing that I've told young people over and over again is to, uh, you know, uh, diversify in your skill set. Make sure that uh, if uh, so much of what we do, for instance, uh, goes out through social media, just like this, uh, learn about it and not just, uh, you know, how to push the buttons and, and get everything to work, but, but where it goes and, and who your audience is and, 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 and when you release certain things. And you have to be able to provide for that uh, video, uh, uh, audio, the written piece, uh, the photos that go with it. So I think uh, the, the thing, I'll, I'll fall back on my college professor who told me, uh, you know, they would be much better off uh, to learn uh, more than one skill set. Uh, and I think as long as they remember that, and, and I will say this, Alex, young people have grown up uh, with the digital age uh, now. I, I did not. The first time I saw a computer, it was, it was, believe me, it was a very ancient computer, and I had no clue about it. And to be honest, I was a little afraid of it. I was used to a typewriter uh, and developing film in a, in a dark room. Wow, how uh, it's changed, huh? It has changed, and believe me, <laughs> I was reluctant to change with it. Uh, but um, as we did, as people my age did, we saw such a potential for it. Two words of advice, uh, I should say. Uh, number one uh, is learn a lot of different uh, skill sets. Uh, but the other uh, for our, our, our writers, especially those who are, um, I think, writing about agriculture, uh, I have found that uh, it serves me better to write from my heart sometimes than it does from my head. And uh, I, don't know, I don't know if you learn that or it just comes along the way or perhaps you're born with it, but um, sometimes you're a little bit better off to, to listen here or as much here as here. So that would That's be my fantastic advice. advice. Uh, as someone who enjoys writing, I can certainly understand that sometimes uh, the heart messages might be a little better than our, our well thought out, well articulated research points um, because we're human, right? And we want to connect with people through our writing and the things that uh -huh. we think. You well, know, I, if I share a real quick story with you. Yeah. I, I had an editor once uh, um, uh, call me into her office and uh, we were talking about a specific story and she said, if she sees this, she, she'll kill me. But uh, we, we, been great friends throughout, so it didn't damage our friendship at all. She said, Tim, you know, you write like you talk. And I said, well, thank you. And she said, I didn't mean it as a compliment. <laughs> and I thought for a minute and I, and I, I said, well, how do, you, how do you hear me when, when I talk or when, I, when you read something? Do you hear my voice when you, 
when you read something and she she said well of course that's that's why how i know that you you write like you talk and i said well i i can't take that any other way but as a compliment and um that was the end of our discussion <laughs> so uh you know i figure if i read something and can't understand it there's probably somebody else out there who can't so i make sure that um uh, you know when i when i put uh, words down that i want people to understand what i'm trying to say and that usually works best when i write like i talk <laughs> me too me too i try to take out a couple of couple more jokes than i put in real life but <laughs> <laughs> yeah they are well we are about out of time uh, for our interview so really quickly could you let us know how we can follow all the things that you're doing at Farm Bureau and keep up with you absolutely I believe it's kyfb.com uh, and uh, there's a page there that will take you to all sorts of places uh, one of them will be our webpage our, for our social media and things like that. Uh, if you go out on YouTube, you can, again, you can uh, search for Kentucky Farm Bureau and you'll come to all the videos that are there, including yours. So all that information is out there, easily attainable. We, we invite everybody to come out and take a look. Fantastic. Well, I'll make sure we'll get the links posted and tag you guys in this video so you get a chance to see it as well. But Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. You guys, thank you for joining us for another interview in our Ag Aspiration series. And we hope to see you back soon. Bye, guys. Thanks, Alex.